What happens if your asylum is not granted? everyone welcome to the phoebe way if this is your first time on this channel my name is phoebe and this is the phoebe way on the phoebe way we talk about life in germany moving to germany settling in germany legal and social topics about life in germany so if this is what you're interested in please don't go anywhere subscribe to this channel activate your notification button and let's get into this video so the returning subscribers hey thank you so much for coming back let's get into this video so today's topic is the asylum procedure from application or from arrival to um, the court proceeding and all of that. I'm going to try to break everything down for you so that you will understand. If you wish to have this video in tree or in fancy, please comment in the comment section down below and I will gladly do that. If you also want me to answer any questions, please comment down below. If you want it to be a confidential question, you don't want anybody to know about it, shoot me an email ldbwithphoebe at gmail.com. It is also down in the description box below. Just copy, paste, and shoot me that email, okay? So I work as a legal translator, and in my job, I encounter a lot of people who do not know what is actually happening. They All they know is that they want to stay in Germany, but they don't really understand the steps and what goes into all of that. So that is why I'm here today for you guys, and I'm just going to try to break things down, okay? Asylum is a right. For you to get protection within a country or within Germany is a right, all right? And... In as much as it's a right, it's also a responsibility to cooperate. Let's get that out of the way first of all, okay? Now, how do you do it? The first step is that once you come to Germany, it is your duty to register, okay? Let the authorities know that you are in the country. Now, you can register right at the border, that is what is advised, or once you enter the country and you are in the country, you should register. So how do you register? First of all, you should report yourself, right? So you report yourself either to the police as a security entity, to the, you can report yourself to the immigration authority. You can also report yourself to a reception facility or directly you can go to an arrival center. So there are so many ways for you to do it. I'm just going to be shooting them into the video so that when you see it, you know, okay, this is what I can do. This is what my friend can do or something. Now you're going to report yourself. What happens next? What happens next is the registration. You should know this. This is the first time that they're going to take your personal data. So it will be your name, your date of birth, your country of origin. And um, if you're above 18, uh, 14 years, sorry, if you're above 14 years, they're going to take your fingerprints, okay? Now what happens to this information? This information is going to be um, fed into the database. When they need information from you, the public officers are going to then take this data and work with it. So this information, all this new information that you've given them, is going to be compared with certain registers with the data of the central register of foreigners and also going to be compared with um, registers available to the police. You should know that. Now, after you have registered, you're giving the, your data, then you're going to be taken to the reception facility. All asylum seekers are taken to one reception facility and then later they are redistributed, okay? Um, they have different criteria for distribution. We're not going to delve into that. Now, if you want to know more about that, just say it in the comment section below and we'll talk about that in one of the next videos. So, when you go to the reception facility, you get the Ankunsnachweis. That means proof of arrival. Because that is your first, that's your first document in Germany. This also serves the purpose of identification and also gives the benefits like you can get healthcare, you can get food, you can get shelter. It serves as a document to prove your entitlement to reside in Germany for now. Let's get the steps again. One, you have reported. Two, you have registered. Three, you are in the facility, in the reception facility. So that is like the camp or that's what we normally call them, the camp. Now, what happens next? What happens next is that you get to apply for your asylum then. Remember that, remember this, when you're applying for the asylum, it is something that you have to do personally. It's only in special cases that you don't have to apply personally, but in written form. Now, what happens when you're applying personally? So you go there, you can also get a translator. You don't have to be afraid. You go to the federal office, okay? Usually an office at the arrival center. So you go there, then you'll be told um, about your duties, your responsibilities, and how the asylum procedure goes. In your language, most so if you're from Ghana, you get it in English. If you're from Nigeria, you get it in English as well. If you're from Togo, you get it in French. 
And if you don't understand any of that, you get a translator to help you with um, understanding all of these things, right? If you have any documents that would help with your identification, so be it your passport, your birth certificate, um, your driver's license, anything that shows that this is the person we are talking about and this person is from this country. If you have it, you'd be asked to present those as well. So now, after you have filed your application, what happens? Then you get an Aufenthaltsgestattung. This means that you are allowed to reside in Germany, but it also comes with a limitation. It also comes with a restriction. What am I talking about? It comes with a residence obligation, meaning that you are supposed to stay where they tell you to stay. It depends on the case. So if you have good prospects, you are um, told that, okay, you can move within the district. And some people will tell you that I've, I've been assigned to a Landkreis. Yes, you're allowed to move within that district. And other people, if your prospects are not that good, you're not even allowed to leave the facility. So where the camp is, is where you stay till your case is decided. Now you're finished filing the asylum. What happens? What happens is that the authorities will then examine whether it is Germany that is responsible for your asylum procedure or a different EU country. All right, now you are filed for the asylum. They have done the Dublin check and it is Germany that is assigned to you or is Germany that is responsible for your asylum um, procedure that is good you get to stay within Germany till your asylum procedure is decided on what happens next what happens next is this you are then invited to go for your interview the questions they are going to ask you are about your personal life so the reasons why you live in your country or the reasons why you left your country what you should be af what do you think you'll be afraid of why, why do you think your life will be at risk or why do you think you cannot return back to your country. Your your escape route, like in your flight route. What? How did you um, escape? Which countries did you pass through? How, how was it by land, by air, by sea? All these questions will be asked. And one thing you should know is that if you are telling the reasons why you left your country, you should know that the interviewer is familiar with the circumstances in your country. They know what happens in your home country already. They have been you've been assigned to somebody who is conversant with your country. So there's no need for you to lie about what is not in your country if it doesn't happen there, okay? They know about all of that. They know about the culture, they know about everything, basically. So another thing you should know is that you don't have to be afraid about the language. A lot of people are, are, get um, confused or get worried about the language. You know that you're going to get translators. Um, if you don't get a translator in English, sometimes you get a translator in Pidgin, in Igbo, in Yoruba, in Fancy, in Tree, in Ewe. You, in Swahili, you get your, you get somebody who speaks your language and these people will be brought in by the state as well. Everything that you are saying is being recorded. So they'll, they'll take the minutes and after you've said everything, they'll translate um, it in German and then they'll translate what was translated in German back to you in your native language. Please pay attention and listen because it could be that some misunderstandings have been made. Translator understood you wrongly and they assume something please listen and pay attention and correct that you understand why i'm saying that now stay tuned i'll tell you why you should pay attention and correct whatever mistakes you see don't they just say yeah fine let's move on no don't move on make sure that you correct whatever is retranslated back to you okay good and if you don't if you arrive at the appointment and you don't feel well please let the interviewer know that hey my mind is not here today I, am, I don't feel fit to do this interview. Say it as well because it will be recorded too. All right, so that is how the interview goes. They'll ask you your name, your date of birth, why did you leave your country, and they'll ask you questions into details. Please give the details as well, all right? All right, so now you've done the interview, what happens next? BAMF, as in Bundesamt für Migration und Flüchtlinge, the federal agency of the Federal Office for Migration and Refugees, what will they do? They will then give, let you know their decision in written form. Now, there are two types of, no, there are three types of decisions. The positive decision is that you have been granted asylum. Yay. The other one is that you have not been granted asylum, but there are two um, forms of negative decisions, all right? So let's talk about the positive one. When you have been granted asylum, it's based on four reasons. Let me break the reasons down to you real quick. You get the acknowledgement of entitlement to asylum according to Article 16A of the Basic Law. Mm -hmm. Or you'll be awarded the Refugee Protection, Section 3 of the Asylum Act. You'll be awarded subsidiary protection within Germany according to Section 4 of the Asylum Act. Or there will be a ban imposed that you cannot be deported. That's the position of a ban 
on deportation according to section 60 um subsection 5 and 7 of the residence act okay so these are the reasons why you'll be granted asylum so it means either you can't leave germany or you need to protect it within germany because the country doesn't have the internal protection for you there are different reasons but I know by the time you get the positive answer, you don't even care because it says yes, you can stay in the country, right? So we've dealt with the good news. Let's get into the bad news. What happens if your asylum is not granted? There are two outcomes possible. So the first one is the outright rejection. The outright rejection. I'm for up Leno. With that, you have one month to leave the country. So 30 days, I think. I think it's 30 days or one month. You have 30 days, you have 30 days to leave the country, okay? That is one thing. And then with the offensively unbegründet, English term for that is manifestly unfounded. Do with that term what you want to do. But basically it says that there's obviously no reason why you should get asylum, you should get the protection, okay? That is it. Later, by this point, you contact a lawyer and let the lawyer take over. Why? Because you can take the matter to court. You can take the federal office to court and tell them that you want this. To be, you tell the court that you want this decision to be revoked. You are applying for protection according to those first four things I talked about, as in Article 16 of Grundgesetz or at, um, Section 3, Section I think Section 3, Section 4, and Section 60 of the Asylgesetz. So, or, and Ausländer Gesetz. So, you talk about all these things and you tell them that because of this, I'm eligible for asylum. I'm eligible for protection. And why am I not going to protect you? So you take the matter to court and your lawyer has to do so. Make sure that you get your lawyer ASAP because there's a deadline. So once you get that letter, make sure that you contact a lawyer. Not just any lawyer. You go to a lawyer who says Fachanwalt für Asylrecht. Fachanwalt für Asylrecht. Or even if he doesn't say he's a Fachanwalt that he's specialized in it, you read his card or you read... You go to his website, you check out what he's, he specializes in. Sometimes he's not a power handbag for that, but he, he's also well versed in that. So check things out. You, just, you don't just go to any lawyer. Sometimes lawyers go, Why you're And you're on It does not work that like that, okay? So go to a lawyer who is well versed in your field. So if you're going to get divorced, you don't go to an asylum crisis lawyer, you go to a family lawyer, right? You get what I'm trying to say. So now, your lawyer is going to lodge an appeal against the decision, okay? He's going to contest the decision of Banff. And after your lawyer has lodged the appeal, what happens next? The court will invite you for a hearing. So you, you go to the court and the judge is going to interview you. Mm -hmm. Basically, what the judge is going to do is exactly or similar to what you already did at the federal office. So the judge is going to ask you your name, your date of birth and then um are you healthy to work what are you doing in germany um have you done your language course some judges want to know okay then he'll, he'll ask you what made you leave your country then you tell him then you ask questions because sometimes they'll, what you are telling him that day is different from what you told the interviewer a year ago or two years ago so if there comes to some contradictions the lawyer will then, the judge will ask you why are there contradictions all right and this is why i'm, I'm going to say this when you go for your interviews, be it the one at the federal office or the one in court, tell the court or tell the interviewer what really happened. Why? Because in Germany we say Lügen haben kurzer Beine. Lies will not take you far. Okay? They will ask you a follow-up question and then you realize, hi. Mm. Mm, I don't have that information because it did not happen. You know? So say what you experienced. Say what you know. If you don't know, you don't know. If you know, you know. Say everything. That's another thing. Say everything. If you don't feel comfortable going alone, if you want to go with somebody you trust, you are you are free to, okay? If you want to go with somebody you trust to the federal office in, um, in interview, you are free to go with the person, um, person you trust. But that person you go with cannot be somebody who is involved in your, in your story. So let's say... Um, your friend who told you that something happened or let's say that person cannot be cannot play a role in your story so the person does not have to do anything with your story or why, as to why you left your journey uh, as to why you left your country that's the person you can go somebody you trust but has nothing to do with the story 
you can go with that person to the interview and also to the courts you can go with somebody that you want you know for moral support and all of that and feel free to speak because the lawyer is not going to carry your matter on his head and be roaming about it on the street to talk about it no he he is he, he's under the oath of secrecy he's not going to carry your matter neither is the judge the judge does not even have time to remember everything about you like that you know there are a lot of people that the judge is working with so don't be shy about saying certain things and don't be shy of the translator because you feel like oh the translator is from my country he might carry my matter he's going to spread my news if a translator spreads your news report him or her why because translators are also supposed to keep everything they see everything they hear in their heads translators cannot carry your matter out so please 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 be bold enough to say whatever happened and i know there are certain things that are hard to talk about like rape like other forms of abuse like female circumcision um you have to indicate that okay so that you you might also get psychological help as well please do not forget okay so these are the steps and then after the judge has heard you and has finished the interview, he has heard everything that you have to say, you then he or she will then tell you, all right, I've heard everything you're saying. Um, I'm going to um, announce that the decision will be made in writing. So he's going to send a letter to your lawyer and then your lawyer will let you know the content of the decision of the court. So what happens um, after you've gone to court? One will be the right of residence, two will be right to remain, and three will be an obligation to depart so these are the three outcomes um, if you want to know more about that it's, that one too is a bit complicated but if you want to know about that just um, leave your question in the comment section below and let's let's talk about it so if you are you're given an obligation to depart basically um, you can say I'm leaving myself or obligation to depart, to depart will be suspended and you'll be given a doldo but you're given the right to reside it's in the hands of the immigration authorities same way as the right to remain and it also if you have to leave it's also in the hands of the of immigration authorities how that they are the ones who are responsible for that and they are the ones who want to take care of that okay when you are in that state of seeking asylum a lot of people are crying a lot of people are scared a lot of people are worried let me just give you this free advice you cannot be deported just like that it's not something that happens overnight it takes time because there are legal steps that have to be taken okay and that is why you just need to um, speak with your lawyer ask all questions that you have ask them if this doesn't happen what happens next if you realize that your lawyer and your you and your lawyers communication is not working well find someone who speaks your language so that the person can act as a translator because a lot of times some of you don't understand your lawyers and it's evident actually so Make sure that you have somebody who's going to help you with that. And also, one thing that always looks good is somebody who is learning the language. Why? Because when you learn the language, it shows that you have the will to integrate. You have the will to stay and make your stay a good one, basically. So when you're in Germany, always ask, once you've been registered and all of that, ask, when can I start a language course? When can I work? Okay, you're not going to be here and be a burden on the on the society. Work, go to school, learn the language. These are free tips. I tell you what, the, the judge might ask you, but smartphone these sites in Deutschland, what have you been doing since you've been in Germany? What do you say? Nothing, because they are not allowing me to work. What are you doing? Are you trying to learn the language on your own? Are you trying to go to language school? Please, please, please learn the language and don't listen to people who tell you um, the language is difficult and it's hard and all of that. Try it, okay? Try it. It will help your case. Please, please, please try learning the language. That is actually one of the things I came to tell you and also don't listen to other people so much because sometimes every case is different. What works for person A might not work for person B. So don't go and say the story of person A because Person A succeeded with that story. Um, as I've told you, the interviewers are conversant with what happens in your country. And another thing that I nearly forgot is that there is a list of reports of evidence on how your country is, is doing, you know? So they'll tell you, um, Listerdale, um, Smith, 
this list talks is from all kinds of of um of non-government organizations they are from institutions from your country so the the from nigeria it's usually from the national bureau of statistics it's from the foreign office they are all talking about the situation in your country how your police is how your police brands itself how your police functions what happens in, in your country when it comes to certain topics you know they know all of that this information this information is on the website of the court the list is sent to your lawyer so this list of evidence that is used in um in judging your case it's, it's considered in judging your case basically it's that's the list that that's the evidence that the judge also relies on so please don't try to say any story that you hurt someone and that story does not apply to you whatever you say has to be something that you yourself experienced okay so don't say for example um answers happened and because of answers i left don't say answers happened because of answers i left how did answers affect you personally were you hurt during the um, protest were you um persecuted during the protest did somebody come after you based on answers this for example is what will be asked but don't say that all of us were running so me too i run what is the correlation between you and answers that is what you should know this this is the kind of questions that are asked or this is the kind of questions that are legally um important so guys i've come to the end of today's video like this video if it helped you let me know because it lets me know the kind of videos that i should do subscribe to this channel for more and let me know your questions i really want to make this channel not just not just a fun channel where we just have what I, I just have fun with you guys but also i want to be able to make an impact that is definitely one of the most important things i want to do i want to make an impact so please please let me know what you want to know like comment subscribe and see you same time next sunday subsequently we are going to have videos on marriage visa family reunification we're going to have um, videos on how you how to naturalize the steps to naturalization the documents that you would need and all of that and also of course how can i forget you also got, talking about dating in germany and all of that i don't know which video is going to go up first or next but yes i'm going to have a guest on this on this channel pretty soon i'm so excited about that as i always say take good care of yourselves like two facilities stay hopeful wear your mask wear your ffp2 mask when you're outside and see you same time next sunday cheers